I've not been climbing in so long, but today I'm out at Narrabeen. We got Jose, we got Matt, and we got Will. That's so much harder than I thought. <laughs> There's some spots there where I'm grateful for A, the bolts, and B, for Joseph having my back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you. So today I want to talk a little bit about some rock climbing photography techniques. And the first thing to think about is really subject isolation. It's super important to isolate your subjects because an isolated subject is what the viewer is looking for in the photo. It helps to make a pleasing image and it makes your photos look more professional. So today I've got some tips to help you to isolate your subjects, especially when you're rock climbing in a place like this where there's just a lot of dense bushland type stuff and there's not as much of a natural isolation in the background. For example, if you're climbing on a big rock face on a cliff, you've got a lot of depth between the actual cliff and the ground below or the sky. There's natural isolation there. But today I wanna to talk about some techniques you can use even when that's not the case. Let's jump right in. So one of the first things you can do to isolate your subject is to use a lens with a super shallow depth of field. I like to use my 50 millimeter 1.2 prime lens and that has a lot of natural depth of field. I can get right down to f1.2. And you can see, here's some photos with the f1.2. You can see just how much blur the background has compared to a shot that's say an f4 or something like that. And blurring that background really helps to isolate that subject. So definitely consider using a prime lens or a lens with a super shallow depth of field. So another thing you can do is use lens compression. So when I'm shooting on my 75 to 300, if I zoom all the way into 300, the lens has some natural compression that blurs the background and helps you to isolate your subject. This is gonna work on any zoom lens, so consider using that as well. We finished up climb number one. We're over here at climb number two. Oh, so we don't use this. This one's got a bit more overhang. This one's got like we don't use this. Not sure how far we'll get, but it should be fun. <laughs> thing you can do to isolate your subject is look for lighting. Sometimes you'll get dappled lighting that comes in from the sun coming around a rock or through the trees and if you can put your subject in a spot that's lit and then put the rest of your shot in shadow, our eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of the image and you can use that to isolate your subject. Now we don't really have that right now because we're in the shade underneath this giant outcrop but if you're on a cliff somewhere you might find that this works really well as well. <laughs> All right, we are done climbing for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got some value from it. It's really important to learn to isolate your subjects, especially when you're doing rock climbing photography in such dense woodland type locations. You don't have a nice cliff to isolate it for you. So hopefully you got some value from this video. If you did, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. I'll try and get down there and help you guys out. And huge thanks to Jose and to Will and to Matt for coming out today. I'll leave all their social links in the description box. Give them a follow. I'm sure you'll see some great climbing stuff. And thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel. There's a bunch more stuff coming in the future, so hit the notification bell. Make sure you won't miss out on that. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday. See you then. Come on. This is the boulder problem itself. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a push ball. <laughs> <laughs>